Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, this is another meatloaf, meatloaf uh, 43, and um, got a few things going on here. So I uh, didn't go to the flea market this weekend, but uh, went to um, an antique store uh, and saw some neat stuff there. And uh, I picked up a book that I'm going to show you guys. It's pretty cool. And um, and I also went to a uh, uh, another bookstore that uh, my wife and I like to go to, and I found a a really cool book uh, uh, from I don't know around the 80 something like that 1980 um, and it's got some heavy engineering stuff in it that uh, we'll take a peek at um, let's see what else um, I've got some stuff I rescued out of the scrap bin I'm going to show you and uh, we'll talk about uh, the mystery tool and show another mystery tool so uh, let's uh, let's pop over to the table and uh, let's uh, take a look at some stuff and uh, I think they got something else in there too, but I don't remember what it is. So let's take a look at that and uh, let's get going. Okay, so this is this uh, book I got at the uh, the antique store, and I got it. Uh, they had it marked eighteen dollars, but I got it for a little less than that. Um, <clears throat> they had a I don't know a sale going or whatever. Um, this thing came from Cal Poly, I guess. Um, that's down in San Luis Obispo here in California, and I think it's just a uh, the text <clears throat> of the machine shop course, um, and it's it's full of all kinds of interesting stuff, and uh, it's kind of a neat book. The uh, a lot oh there's a that was one that I wanted to show but I forgot the market. Um, there was a thing on lapping. Uh, yeah, so it, you know we talked about lapping the other day. Well. Here's a guy with the lap in the lathe, and he's lapping an ID of something here. You know, he's got a little oil on it there. So that's another way you can do that. Um, so, you know, it's fairly comprehensive. It's got a lot of stuff in it. Um, now, the, the more, the part that uh, caught my attention, there's a cool radial drill there. It's kind of neat. And that's like a, uh, um, like an old Fosdick there or something like that, but it's kind of a um, line drawing there. And so, you know, layout, saw blades, all that stuff. So all this stuff is, is kind of pertinent, right? So we've been talking about draw filing, etc., cetera, right? Um, what, what I wanted to show you guys was this particular edition has a rather large section on shaping and planing, okay? Um, and so I would say that <laughs> there's, on the web at least, there's a resurgence of uh, uh, these types of machines. Uh, they're, they're still around, uh, they haven't all been scrapped out, and a lot of guys, you know, it's, and it's a low opportunity cost to get a shaper, and uh, they're actually kind of neat machines. So Adam's got one, Gary Stork has uh, uh, several, um, I think, uh, uh, Keith Fenner has one uh, floating around there somewhere, and uh, James Kilroy. Uh, so a bunch of guys uh, have these things. Anyway, uh, this has a uh, a pretty a pretty long section in here on shapers and setups and uh, and tools and geometry and yada yada yada. There's a big there's a big guy there. So uh, look, it's got its own crane attached to it. So that's a pretty pretty studly one there. Um, tool bits. Yeah. So as you can see, this keeps going, right? Setups, all that stuff. So what are they doing there? I don't know. It's hard to read upside down. <laughs> anyway. Uh, um, for those of you guys that have shapers, and, uh, uh, and there's using a planer gauge there. Uh, somebody asked me about that not too long ago. There they're doing a dovetail casting. So uh, making uh, like vice jaws, flat knurling. So this, this used to be the machine. Okay, now we get into planers and stuff like that. But you can see that's a pretty good section. So uh, if you're interested in picking this book up, there's the, uh, the title and the authors. And uh, so, before anybody asks, there's probably not an ISBN number, so uh, it's just you're going to have to do a little research, and I'm not going to do it for you. So, uh, this is 1955. Um, anyway, uh, that's a good book. Okay, so the, uh, the second book I got recently 
is uh, this one here, and this one's pretty interesting actually. I, uh, um, I don't remember what I spotted. This was sticking up. It said Soviet, Soviet technology, right? So I pulled it out and I looked at it. And it's just chock full of uh, pretty cool stuff. And it was it was only four bucks, so I said, oh, I gotta have this thing here. Um, so let's let's flip through it. There's some cool stuff in here. So on the opening page here, uh, you see some pretty neat things here uh, from an engineering perspective. This caught my eye here. Uh, this is a uh, a big valve that's being machined here. There's a control panel. So I was like, oh, okay. There's going to be some good stuff in here. So let's let's flip through it. I got some stuff marked that you guys will probably like. So this is kind of you know machine machine and engineering porn is what this is. So uh, let's take a look here. And there's all these guys. <laughs> There's all these uh, uh, engineers and scientists in here, and they're all very, very grumpy-looking uh, folks, uh, very stoic and uh, you know, and very serious. There's only one guy that's got a little impish, little grin on his face. So here's a uh, reactor vessel that they're standing up here, and you can see it's got on some blocking here, and they're sliding it up. And but just to kind of put it in perspective, here's the crane here, and you can just barely read it on there. It's a double hook, 250 ton crane that they're standing this up with. So this is in a reactor building here. So this is the crane to service a reactor, right? So they have to put a crane in the building that'll, that'll lift the reactor vessel. So this thing is probably close to that, uh, that kind of mass. Um, <laughs> pretty killer. Uh, here's a uh, kind of, um, it's probably for a hydroelectric, it's hard for me to read upside down, but hydroelectric thing, it's on a uh, vertical boring mill here. And then we'll see some more vertical boring mills in here too. So um, let's uh, flip through here. Should probably just go through, go right to the tag. So here's a, here's a good one. Check out the little hats these guys are wearing here. And uh, so here's a, uh, a vertical boring mill here that they're doing this big, whatever that is. And then here's a lathe for you, Adam. Look at this guy here. This is a big guy. Uh, look at that boring bar. I don't think I have one that big. That's a, uh, quite the machine there. So you see this machine. Here's some, uh, some sign in Russian there on the sign. And then they get this funky little oil can down here. Anyway, that's the kind of stuff I, I look for in the pictures, you know. All right, so here's some more. Um, uh, once again... So here's a vertical uh, boring mill here, big guy. And I think, let's see, let me flip this around. No, this isn't the one here. Uh, one of them had the size on it here. Um, now here's one that's kind of like Adam's uh, boring mill here. Uh, it's a horizontal boring mill, but it has the uh, this slide plate on it so that it can actually traverse here and face, which is kind of neat. Uh, that's a, a neat feature there. All right, let's flip this one over. Oh, here it is, right here. So this one, uh, this is a big guy, uh, twin column vertical boring mill here, and they're turning something that's uh, 6,770 millimeters uh, diameter, which is like, so it's 6.7 meters, three, it's like, it's like 20 foot diameter. It's around 20 feet diameter, something like that. So that's a <laughs> pretty good size one there. All right, so here's some more. Pretty cool vessel, and there's another uh, there's another picture of that in the back here, and you know just to, so yeah okay fine look at the part right, but then look at the machine to do the part, and then that was assembled from bits made on other machines, so you know that's you start thinking about that kind of stuff, and it's uh, it's pretty amazing. So let's keep going. Let's see what's on this one here. Oh, so here's another shot of that. Uh, uh, that horizontal uh, mill or boring mill uh, with that slide, uh, that sliding face. So you can put it on center and drill and bore with it, or you can have this put a tool in there and have it face across something. So these are some kind of valve bodies or whatever. They've just welded these and they're probably going to machine those and make them into valves. So yeah, I just I just love this kind of stuff, uh, um, you know, kind of heavy engineering stuff. Pretty neat. So there's another shot of that, probably a little farther along. They've uh, they've machined it, and like I said, just look at the machine. You know, it's got ladders all over it, so you can run up the ladder and adjust the lever, and uh, 
sharpen your tool bit, uh, you know, <laughs> with the crane. Anyway, uh, pretty neat stuff. Um, this is this uh, Soviet Technology and Engineering Digest. So it's like a trade magazine or something like that. So uh, I'm going to be on the lookout for volumes, uh, uh, some other volumes of this, uh, just to take a peek at them. Anyway, thought you guys might like that. All right, so here's uh, this is last week's mystery tool. And this was just way too easy. Um, I think the first comment on that video had the uh, had the correct answer. So <laughs> it's a uh, it's a shoe stretcher uh, for bunions and corns, I guess uh, uh, typically. And I'll show you how it works here. I got a I got a boot here, and uh, you can um, reach way down to the toe, for example, and you can. You can stretch a little section, you know, that's uh, that's bothering you. Uh, it's kind of a neat, a neat tool. And uh, so I had a pair of these backpacking boots that uh, got a little dry and they shrunk a little bit, and uh, that's why I bought this at the uh, the big Alameda flea market. And so I oiled the leather and uh, and softened it a little bit, and then there was a little spot that was uh, banging into my pinky toe, and I was able to kind of massage it out a little bit with this tool here. Um, anyway, it's pretty cool, and, uh, but like I said, you guys, you guys just jumped on this right away, so uh, the score now is uh, viewers four, Tom one, I think, so uh, I'm not doing very good, uh, not doing very good, so I gotta find something harder for you guys. Okay, so this next thing, um, what I wanna show you, I'll bring them all out at once here. What these are, I rescued these out of the trash. Um, a guy that, uh, that I work with um, uh, retired recently, okay, and uh, in his toolbox, he was cleaning out his toolbox, um, and he tossed these in the, uh, in the scrap bin. But I pulled them out because they're kind of interesting. And what these are, um, or many, many years ago, he took a uh, machine tool technology class or machine tech class um, at Diablo Valley College. And uh, these are uh, some of the uh, pieces of sample work that he did um, uh, for that class. So this is the classic uh, step mandrel here. Um, where you know you're given a piece of material and you have to turn some diameters here uh, and actually they're labeled here let's see if i can read them here it's a little rusty here um, this one says 5502 6 something 750 800 i don't know so i don't know what the targets were if the targets were some kind of even steps or um, or if they were strange diameters uh, that they were just trying to uh, to hit those numbers. So it does a couple of things. It, you know, you got to sharpen a tool, um, and it looks like they ran them between centers here, potentially. Uh, so you have to turn a diameter, and you have to you have to use the micrometer to measure. So there, there's several things, and then it's knurled here too on this end. Um, I may clean it up a little bit, just you know, just because. Um, but that's the kind of the classic lathe exercise there. So that's the first one. And then uh, here's the probably one of the second ones here where um, they did some threading, some single point threading. Okay, and once again, between centers, a um, couple different diameters um, just to, uh, to get practiced uh, with threading. Okay, and they get a little thread relief on them. And um, actually, I'm kind of curious how they... Uh, I wonder if they had, let's see if we can see here. I can't see if they had a dog on this end or what uh, to drive this part. Uh, actually, it would have been on this end, huh? I don't see any flats or any, any evidence. Maybe they had a little sleeve that went over here to, uh, to grab this when they, were, when they were threading this end. Don't know. Anyway, uh, I don't know what the uh, actual exercise was. Now, this one's kind of interesting here because this is a... Uh, uh, what this is is an example of multi-start threads here. So this is the first groove here, okay, and then uh, progressing along, this is the second groove, um, 
and then this is the third groove here. So this is a three-star thread, and how you can tell, I don't know if that's gonna be in focus there. You can look at the end and see how many entrances there are. Um, so if you, that's all you have to look at. It's a little bit hard to tell, uh, unless you look at the end, and uh, you can see how many starts there are. So you count the starts, and that's what I, I call multi-start threads. Some people call them multi-groove threads. So what this does was, so here's the first groove right here, right? So this thread here behaves like a thread with this amount of lead, okay? But uh, the advantage here with the multi-start, so if you, so if you needed a, a thread with that, that kind of um, uh, helix or that kind of advance to it, right? Um, you can see that to make those form up into V's, that thread would have to be very, very deep, right? So a tricky way of getting around that is that we, uh, we end up with a shallower thread that behaves like it has this lead here, okay? Um, so anyway, that's kind of how that works. Now, it looks like you had a little boo-boo here. I don't know what happened exactly uh, there. Um, uh, but I think the way they ran this is they just, uh, they ran the, the first groove all the way down and then started in here and did the second groove all the way down and then started in here and did the third groove all the way down. But anyway, that's kind of multi-star threads. So I thought you guys would get a kick out of those. So if you uh, are looking for lathe practice, um, these would be a couple of really good little exercises to kind of, you know, you have to do multiple diameters and repeat and take those measurements, a little knurling and a little threading practice, a couple different diameters, and, uh, and then some multi-starts. So uh, anyway, basic machine shop uh, uh, exercises. Okay, so um, last week's mystery tool, you guys kind of nailed right out of the gate. So uh, this, is, uh, this is this week's uh, mystery tool here. Give you guys a little view of that here. And um, you guys can get some idea there, and it opens up. Okay, all right, all right. So uh, if you guys think you know what that is, throw that up in the, uh, Throw that up in the comments. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna make it a little harder for you guys. You guys are too good at this. So uh, all you get, I'm not gonna read numbers off of this thing. Uh, if you wanna stop the video and, and pull those numbers off, you can. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm gonna make it a little tougher for you guys uh, since you, you guys seem to be rocking this thing out uh, <laughs> pretty well. So uh, anyway, that's this week's mystery tool. You think you know what that is? Put it up in the comments and uh, let's uh, let's hear what you think. I used to have a little Wilton on this, uh, the corner of this um, toolbox when this was my, uh, my at work box. Um, but that's since, I don't know what happened to that one actually. Oh, uh, huh. good question, what is that? Which one was it? I don't even remember which one it was now. There was a little, uh, a little Wilton on this corner here that was kind of handy for little stuff. So this is a side box that I built uh, a long time ago. Uh, so it's like 14 gauge sheet metal and then there's a uh, plastic top on it. Uh, you know, just so you got a work surface there. But now I got this cool little Bowley vise that needed to get mounted somewhere and I've been thinking about where to mount it.
Don't look at that bolt. It's an ugly bolt, but it's the only one I got that's got the, it's got the right length there. So this little side box has got some, uh, some history here. I'll show you a couple things once we uh, get this snug down. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, little wrenches here too. Uh, this is a, uh, so it's got a uh, socket on one end so you can actually kind of use it like that or like that so it's almost like a box wrench, okay, uh, for shallow stuff. And then you got an open end on the other. So I have a couple of these. I don't have a full set. I have 7 16 half inch, 9 16 and 3 quarter. Kind of the standard uh, fastener sizes. So uh, um, I just love them. And uh, they're, uh, they're real handy because you can point. What I like is you can point the thing straight out. Like so. You know, you can get it out there and you can... You can Alright, one mounted bully vice. So, you see this, uh, this scrubbing here. Uh, I used to have a little thing here and, uh, uh, to hold a grinder. Let's see, can you? Yeah, you guys can see that. Um, so, you know, from a long time of shoving that grinder in there, the, it wore the, through the paint and then wore part way through the metal. <laughs> I guess because I'm right handed, I, the way I put it on there, it, uh, it kind of hit on that one side. Anyway, a little bit of history there. And uh, it's full of spray cans and uh, lubes and other stuff in there. So.